Here I've got a nice problem that was from the 2005 team selection test for Slovenia to decide who goes to the International Math Olympiad. And before we look at the problem and its solution, I'd like to point out that one of my favorite hobbies is rock climbing. And in fact, the best competition climber of all time, I think which is generally agreed upon, is competing right now from Slovenia. Her name is Janja Garnbrot. So I think it's a pretty interesting time to be a fan of competition rock climbing and Slovenia in general. So anyway, let's look at this problem. Our goal is to determine all functions from the interval 0 infinity to 0 infinity. So by this I mean the positive real numbers satisfying this functional equation. So we have x squared times the quantity f of x plus f of y, and then we have x plus y times f evaluated at f of x times y. Okay, so generally one of the first things that you want to start doing here is substituting different values for x and y to see if we can get some simplification. But the first thing I'll do is set x equal to y. So set these two variables equal to each other and see what we get. So let's do that. Let's set x equal to y and see what our functional equation turns into. So we'll have x squared, f of x plus f of x. So that'll be 2f of x. So that means the left-hand side is 2x squared times f of x. Then let's look at the right-hand side. We'll have x plus x, so that's 2x. And then we'll have f evaluated at x times f of x. Okay, f evaluated at x times f of x. But now since x comes from the positive real numbers, we can divide it from both sides because it's not zero. Two is also not equal to zero, so we can divide that from both sides. And that leaves us with x times f of x equals f evaluated at x times f of x. Okay, so I think that's pretty interesting. It says that whenever we plug in something like x times f of x into the function, we get something like x times f of x out the other end. Okay, now I'll take maybe a special value of x to see what happens. And maybe I'll take x equals 1 because that's like the simplest. So let's set x equal to 1 like I just said. And that gives us an f of 1 on this side of the equation. And that gives us f evaluated at f of 1 on the other side of the equation. So that tells you that this value f of 1 is called a fixed point. So a fixed point is a point at which when you evaluate the function, the value stays the same. So if we evaluate f at f of 1, we get f of 1 back out. And that gives us some motivation to define that to be like just a certain variable on its own so that we can work with it maybe more cleanly. So let's set a equal to f evaluated at 1. Then that motivates us to put 1 and a into this functional equation. And generally, you'd probably like to try this both ways. But since we just put x equals 1 in here, we'll set x equal to a. And then we'll set y equal to 1 and see what happens. Okay, well, let's do it over here. So we have x equals a, that gives me a squared, and then we'll have f of a plus f of 1, that's this left-hand side, and then over on the right-hand side, we'll have a plus 1, and then we'll have f evaluated at f of a times uh, 1, so that's going to be f evaluated at f of a. Okay, great. But let's notice, by the fact that we call this thing a, this f of 1 equal to a, that tells us that a satisfies the nice equation that f of a equals a. Great. Again, that's just by how we defined a. So that means we can make quite a bit of simplification here. We can replace this f of a with a. And then f of 1 is also a, so that gives us a squared, and then a plus a, so that's 2a, so that really turns this whole thing into 2a cubed. 
So let's make sure we see why that's the case. This is equal to A, and then this is also equal to A. This is because it's a fixed point. This is because of our definition. Then this inner F of A is equal to A, and then we evaluate it again, and we get A one more time. So that means this right-hand side is equal to A times A plus 1, like that. Now we can divide both sides by a. We're allowed to do that because a is not equal to zero. And that gives us 2a squared equals a plus 1, which is a quadratic equation for this unknown a. So let's see. That means 2a squared minus a minus 1 is equal to zero. And then we can factor that as 2a and then a equals zero. Let's see. We need a plus 1 for one and a minus 1 for the other. We'll need a minus one here and a plus one here in order to achieve this cross term. Notice this guy gives us a equals minus half, which doesn't make any sense because we know that a has to be a positive real number. This one gives us a equals one. So now we know that a equals one. So that's a good bit of information because that really means that we know that f evaluated at one equals one. And that gives us a lot of information. Okay, good. So now what we'll do is plug in one back into this equation for one of the variables and leave the other variable just as a variable. So let's do that. So I'll say we'll set x equal to one and I'll let y be equal to y. So it's a free variable. So we'll have one squared here. And then we'll have f of 1, which is equal to 1, plus f of y. So this will be 1 plus f of y on the left-hand side. And over here, we'll have 1 plus y. So 1 plus y times f evaluated at f of 1, which is 1 times y. So that's f of y. So we have that. But that's actually pretty easy to solve. Notice we can distribute out this uh, right-hand side. We get 1 times f of y, which is f of y, and then y times f of y. So the 1 times f of y will cancel with this. And that leaves us with, let's see, 1 equals y times f of y, which means that f of y equals 1 over y. And that's our equation. That's, I mean, that's our function, I should say. And this is the only function that satisfies this functional equation. So in order to actually finish this off, you'd need to plug this function back into this functional equation and make sure everything works. But I'll let you guys do that. And that's a good place to stop.